Bible, stay open there to 1 Samuel. If you need your notes, just the notes for tonight, just hold your hand up. The men are ready to serve you with those. This is a very simple message. So simple. It's too convicting. It's one of those you, you can't get lost in the basic teaching. You can't get lost in in the depths. Very, very simple. Preaching to myself tonight, something we none of us have arrived, something we need to grow in. I preached most of this to our school chapel uh, just this last, about a week or so ago. And so I was toying with that back and forth, but I figure if a kindergartner get it, we might. All right, so it's something to help us tonight, looking at David's reputation. David's reputation. How are we known? Very simple thoughts, very simple passage, but it's, it's very simple training tonight, but one of those kind of training times to help us raise the bar for our life, to raise the bar for our home, to raise the bar for what we just day by day, hour by hour, how we're supposed to be living. Uh, we're looking at reputation and character. We're living in a time where character is not magnified. Character is not lifted up. Character is not something we strive for, at least as a nation as a whole. We've lost it. But God has not changed. God's word has not changed. God's vision for us has not changed. And so we're looking tonight at David's good reputation. From what we just read, we know the story. Saul has disobeyed God. God has removed his hand from him, removed the spirit from Saul. Not that he lost his salvation. We know in the Old Testament the Holy Spirit came upon people for certain times and certain deeds and would, would leave. So he did not lose his salvation, but he did lose the spiritual blessing of God. He did lose that promise of a continuing uh, kingship that he could have had. And that's why it says an evil spirit. Look at verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. I often always have to remind us, God did not send a wicked spirit. It's the fact that I believe it was a spirit of conviction. It was a spirit of great heaviness because he was not right with God. And as, and as when you and I have the same thing in our lives, when we're not right with God, when we're not confessed our sin, when that sin is between us, there's a heavy spirit, there's an evil spirit, there's a troubling spirit upon us. So Saul had this troubling spirit. And when that would happen then... We find that uh, they said, we know what we need to do, King. We need to get you a good musician. We need to have somebody come and play some music for you to soothe you from that. Verse number 16. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shall be well. Even they understood something that today many times we don't accept. Music affects our spirit. Music affects our heart. Music affects our spirit. Uh, if you listen to rap, that's the kind of spirit you're going to have. If you listen to rock and roll, that's the kind of spirit you're going to have. If you listen to the wrong kind of even quote-unquote Christian music, you're not going to have the right spirit. So we have to make sure we understand music affects our spirits. Moms and dads, don't be afraid to tell, the, tell your kids what kind of music they can listen to. Don't be afraid to listen to their little... Uh, Devices that plays the music. Don't be afraid to look to listen. Don't don't go by just the covers. Don't go by just the titles. But listen to it, and don't be afraid to say no. We're not going to listen to that. You need to be the example to make sure that you're listening to the right music. Also, you say, well, music doesn't affect me. Nonsense. You're fifty, sixty years old. If you turn to an old oldies station, you'll drive faster. It'll just happen. That rock will come on, that music will come on, and you'll drive faster. Your mind will go places. So music affects us. But they understood. They says, we'll get somebody who plays some good music. We'll get somebody who can really play and help you. Then notice what one of the servants said, verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. David got the job. But David didn't get the opportunity by auditions. 
They didn't put up a big sheet of paper and said, everybody's interested in being uh, the king's musician, sign up. That's not how he got the opportunity. Uh, they did not put it on Facebook. They did not tweet out a list of folks coming. What he, how he got it was by his reputation. How he got that opportunity, how he got that call, how he got that was by his reputation. Now, so we don't confuse it, reputation is really no more. Another word, a spiritual word might, we might use is testimony. His testimony was such, the guy says, I know somebody. His testimony, his reputation was such that, that it provided him an opportunity to serve the king. An opportunity to be in the king's household. An opportunity to get involved with the, 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 the palace. We know later on he was going to be involved in slaying Goliath and be the big general and eventually the king himself. But at this time he had an opportunity to go into the palace from the sheep, from the wilderness, into the palace to know the king, to know Jonathan, to know those folks simply because of his reputation because of his testimony so let me give you some lessons before we even even get to the real message tonight but some lessons about reputation or testimony you can just write these down by introduction number one reputation as we see here provides opportunity it provides opportunity david went in not because he signed up not because he was on the list but it, but simply because he had a testimony because he had a reputation that he, one of the services i've seen a man I've seen the son of Jesse. I know this fella. Here's the guy we need. Here's the one that comes in. So the op reputation or testimony provided him an opportunity. You and I need to live our lives and have the right reputation, the right testimony, so that God can open up the doors for us, so God can make ways for us. We, we need to live our lives so our reputation, our testimony, is as best it can be, as it's seen there in the picture, the five star, if you will, so that we can have that opportunity. Number two, reputation is based upon what we do. Is that too hard to understand tonight? Reputation is based, our testimony is based upon what we do. Notice in the text, verse number 18, and answered one of the servants said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse. He said, I've seen somebody. I've seen somebody who can do the job. I've seen somebody who's cunning in music and then goes and describes him on that. I think it's there in your notes, Proverbs 20, 11, Such a simple, great truth. But somehow we've lost this in our thinking. The Bible tells us, in Proverbs 20, 11, Even a child, even a child, even a little child, is known by his doings whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Even a child is known by his doings. We look at little children and every child has their own personality. Every child has their own quirks. Uh, they usually come take after dad if it's bad and mom if it's good. But they all have their own characteristics. We know. We can look at a child who's somebody's three, four, five years old and you say, boy, have they got a temper. How many know children that have special tempers? Uh, you say, well, the, boy, that child is a bossy child. I mean, you can tell because they, as soon as they, um, before they can even talk, they're out bossing people around. They just boss. They go into the nursery and they start bossing. They start telling, well, this one is very covetous. This one's going to have this. This one's got a kind of a mean streak. This one's kind of an angry streak. Even a child is known by you. How do you know that? Did you do their mind? Are you a child whisperer? No. You watch them. They take something. They club the kid over next and get to them to get their toy. We say, they've got a very angry little spirit. They've got a bossy spirit. Even a child is known by their doing. Uh, David here is an example. He's a young man at this point. We're not sure exactly the age, but he's not a great mature man. He's not an older man. He's a young man. He said, but I've seen a man. He said, I've seen the son. So he had this testimony. He had this reputation. So even a child is known by his doing. In other words, if a child is known by his doing, so are we adults known by our doing. And the opportunity David had to go to the king was because of his reputation, because of his testimony. So we often, listen, if we want that same testimony to go not to an earthly king, but even to the king of kings and lord of lords, we need to have that reputation, that testimony with God. And so even a child is known by his doings. By his what class? Doings. doings. I think it's there in your notes. Henry Ford said, no reputation is built upon what we're going to do. 
Oh, I'm going to do it. No, that's not a reputation. That's not your testimony. Not what you're going to do. Not all your plans. It's what we do. Not what we hoped we would do. Not what we thought we would do. Not what we would like we would do. But what we do. It's a very simple truth. Reputation is based upon what we do. Even a child is known by his doings. I've said it many times. When all is said and done, a whole lot more is said than done. And so it's, we, we talk a big story, but we don't always do a do, big story. So David's here, his reputation, his testimony provided them opportunity. So reputation is based upon what we do. Reputation provides us opportunity. So if reputation is based upon what we do, what is what we do based upon? It's based upon our character. Our, what we do is based upon what we character, what, what our character is. So based upon our character determines what we do. What we do provides us the reputation. In fact, I think it was Abraham Lincoln said, character is the tree. Reputation is the shadow. It's the result of the character. It's what's remembered. It's what's seen based upon the true. So character is based, or character determines what we do. What we do determines our reputation, our testimony. What does character come from? Character comes from our decisions. The things we decide every single day. We decide we're going to do it or not going to do it. We decide to do right or to do wrong. To take the hard way or to take the easy way. To be right or to be wrong. To do the best or do the second best. So those basic decisions we do make day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment, every single one, that builds a character and that character then determines what we do. What do we do? Based upon our character. And then what we do provides us the reputation or the testimony that people see. So if we want the right kind of testimony, if we we want the right kind of reputation it goes back to just the doing not just to our character but back to our decisions when I wake up in the morning am I going to have my quiet time am I going to decide to do that that decision sets my character as I begin to make those decisions over and over that sets my character and my character then makes my what I do and what I do then provides me the testimony or the reputation that I want to have so to develop the right character, I must make the right decisions. Now, that's so simple, but that's where the battle is. It's a constant battle in our life. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but if I ask you how many this week made some wrong decisions, all our hands would go up. I'm talking about things that weren't outside our control. We just decided I was going to do it or I wasn't going to do it. I'm going to act right or I'm going to not act right. I'm going to speak right or I'm not going to speak right. I'm going to respond right. Or we just make the wrong decisions. So decisions bring character. Character then determines what we do. And then what we do brings that reputation. It's a constant battle. So. If you have a reputation, this is deep theological thoughts. If you have a reputation for being a sloppy, messy person, why do you suppose that would be? Because you've lived your life sloppy and messy. Don't look at me like calves in a new gate. It's as simple as that. Say, well, I don't want a reputation. I do not want a testimony of being sloppy and messy. All right, then it goes back to what you do. Clean up. Don't leave a mess, don't leave a sloppy stuff, but, but clean up. And how do you do that? You make decisions. It goes back to your character. You have a character of being messy and sloppy. How do I fix that? You start deciding, starting today, I want my testimony over there to be not messy and not a slob. I want it to be clean. I want people to think I'm orderly. Then you back up and say, so the decisions I make now is I'm going to clean this mess now. I'm not going to leave it to my wife to do. I'm not going to leave. I love that sign. We used to have it in offices all over the place in PG&E. Your mother doesn't work here. Clean up after yourself. So I have to decide I'm not going to leave a mess. It's as simple as that. You got a mess, you say, I'm kind of tired. I should take that down to the kitchen. Nah. Oh, I know him. He's a slob. He's messy. How did that happen? Right back there, I decided no. I make a spill in the church kitchen. Oh, I could clean it up. Nah, somebody else would do that. 
Whose mess is this? Oh, I know whose mess this is. Yeah. How did that happen? Reputation comes from what we do. What we do comes from our character, and our character comes from our decisions that we make. If you want a reputation of being faithful, if we want a reputation or a testimony of being faithful, our decisions must be, we must decide every time to be, what class? Faithful. Just be faithful. To be where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there, doing how we're supposed to be doing it. If we want a testimony of being punctual, we've got to be punctual. If we want a reputation or a testimony of being kind, we've got to decide to be kind. If we want to be thoughtful and have a reputation of being thoughtful, we have to decide regularly always to be thoughtful, to be sacrificial, to be giving. Whatever that in testimony, that reputation B, it goes back to our decisions because even a child is known by their intents. No, by their what class? Doings. It's as simple as that. So David here, he had a reputation. He had a testimony. We don't know of anybody else, but this guy said, wait a minute, we're going to get a good musician. I've seen a son. It was a reputation that he had. So tonight, let's learn from a good example of some of David's reputation, David's testimony. Now, there's lots of different ideas we could go, but we're going to take this simple little list that God gives us here about his testimony. He had this reputation. He had this testimony. So if God speaks to your heart like he's already spoken to mine about some of these, this is what we need. Here's an example of somebody who had a great testimony, which then provided him an opportunity to go serve the king. It provided him an opportunity to be called into service. It provided him an opportunity. If he did not have this testimony, God maybe could have worked it out. They could have had a lottery. They could have just stumbled in. Some, but no. No, he had this testimony, he had the testimony because of his character, because of his decisions that allowed him to go in. I know a lot of young men or young ladies say, well, I want, I want to be able to be used by God in this aspect of my life. I'm going to Bible college or I'm going to get out and go to college and I want to have opportunities to serve God. Opportunities so many times come from your reputation, from your testimony. They call and say, the previous employer says, what's, 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 what's the testimony? They're a slob. Okay, thank you. They're not punctual. Okay, thank you. It goes back to the reputation and testimony. We need as Christians to understand, we need to have godly testimonies. We need to have Christian reputations. Hello? Very simple thoughts tonight. Let me give them to you. Look at David had a reputation. David's reputation, maybe some, some of these tonight is something you need to apply. Each of these are good. Each of these we're going to find to some degree or other, we're all capable of having these good reputations. Number one, and I admit we had a good, I had a good time with this outline. Number one, David had a reputation for being skillful. He had a reputation for being skillful. Notice what this man said in verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing. He's cunning in playing. The word cunning, well, let's put it this way. Skill is more than just a talent. And that's what cunning's talking about. He just didn't have a talent. He had a skill. He just didn't have an aptitude for it. He was cunning with it. He was good with it. He was talent. He took that talent to the next level. Talent we're born with. Skill is how good we are. Are you listening to me? We're talking about taking those talents, or I could put it this way, spiritual gifts. See, talent we're born with. Spiritual gifts you're born again with. See, when you get saved and born again, God gives you some spiritual gifts. But that's just that raw talent. That's that raw gift God has given to you. Doesn't mean it's, re it's, it's perfect. Doesn't mean it doesn't need to be mature. Doesn't mean it needs to be worked on. Doesn't mean to be built up. It needs, it's there for you. Talent we're born with, skill or how, is how good we are. This, he said, he's, he's cunning. We might see a little young person or a little child and say, boy, they've got some music talent in their genes. They, they, that little child, he's got some, he's got some talent. But if they don't become cunning, if they don't develop that, if they don't grow that, they will not be skillful. Example I gave to in, in chapel, I think it was, you might have a four-year-old boy and say, he's got some real baseball talent. I, he's got some baseball talent. You don't take him and sign him up for the Giants. Maybe the A's, but not the Giants. Why? 
He's got the talent, but he doesn't have the skill yet. He's not cunning in it yet. He's got a long way to go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you and I are going to be have the reputation, the testimony, we're going to be skillful, we've got to get to the place where we take what God has given us, the talents, they may be large, they may be small, but then begin to develop those and become skillful and use them for God. I've heard it put, put a person with a talent, but does not use that talent for God, is of no more value than a man who has none. If God has given you a skill, a talent, a gift, but we do not use it for God and we do not develop it for God, we're just aware of no more value, if you will, than somebody who has no talent. We've got to learn to begin to grow and develop the talents and the skills God has given us. The problem is we say, hey, Preacher, how do I go from talent to skill to cunning, from talent to cunning? i got news for you. Practice, learning, work, you develop that. You decide to go that way. You work at it. We develop that. David, he, was, he got in there because he was cunning with the music. doesn't mean he said, I got a good ear. And I, oh, I own a harp. Isn't that good enough? No. He was cunning. He had developed it out there in the wilderness. Example, Proverbs 18.1. Through desire, God says, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermingleth, with all wisdom. A man who has a desire to have the skill, to have the testimony, to have the reputation, he separates himself to the task and gets involved with all and seeks uh, wisdom and instruction for it. We work at that. Second Timothy 2.15, a very familiar passage, but we don't often think about it in the terms of developing a skill, becoming cunning, developing the right kind of reputation. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's study to show yourself approved. If we're going to rightly divide, you've got to work at it. You have to study it. You have to prepare for it. I'm saying as God's people, let's decide that we're going to take what God's given us and opportunities God has given us, and we're going to go from just not having just a talent are not just having the gift, are not just thinking about it, but being skillful for the glory of God and take what He has given to us for His glory. Hebrews 5.14 But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those by reason of use have their senses exercised, boy, that's a terrible word, senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So it's talking about using and exercises, being full meat. We're talking about developing, becoming skillful in what God has for us. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.3, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because your faith groweth exceedingly. It just didn't get watered, it had to grow. And the charity of every one of you toward each one one another aboundeth. Skillful. He said, I know a man who's cunning in his playing. He's skillful. He's worked at it. Not, God gave him obviously the talent and the ability, but he worked at it. Somebody with less talent and more work becomes more cunning, more skillful than somebody with a lot of talent and no work. Let's don't be afraid to let God use us and say, God, I want... You may be a one-talent person. You may be a five-talent person or a ten-talent person. I know that's talking about money, but it's so applicable to just the skills and abilities God has given to us. Let's take what talents and skills and opportunities God has and let's get skillful for the glory of God. David had a reputation that he was cunning with the music. He was skillful in that. Let's start being cunning and skillful in our service for God. Let's start raising the bar. Say, I don't want to just get by. I don't want to say it's okay. So I'm talking about it in everything in our life. In parenting, raise the bar. Be cunning as a parent. Grow as a parent. Study to be a parent. Figure out where you are, where you should be, and how to take it to the next level. To be, be cunning as a parent. Whether it be as a student in school, learn how to be cunning. Learn how to be skillful. How to learn those things that God has given you opportunity. If you're going to be an usher, let's learn to be skillful as being an usher. Well, I'm, I know enough. We don't know enough. Let's develop and be forward for God. It may be in music. It may be as a teacher. It may be in the nursery. It may be as a preacher. It may be in our soul winning. Let's not be satisfied 
satisfied. Well, I've got this little bit and I'm just satisfied where I am. No, he had a reputation for being skillful. He said, I've seen a man who is skillful, who is cunning. In other words, he's taken that gift and that talent and taken it and studied it and used it to grow. So David had a reputation. He was skillful. What's our reputation? Well, they sure have the talent. Too bad they're not using it. Too, they have a gift, but they're not developing it. They're satisfied. Well, let's don't be satisfied. Let's let God continue to work and be skillful. He had a reputation, number one, of being skillful. If he was not cunning, if he hadn't developed that, they would... The servant said, wait a minute, I know a guy. He's eh, mediocre. In a few years, if he works at it, it'd be all right. King, he's your guy. No. He said, I know somebody who's worked at it. I know somebody who's cunning in the music. Number two, David had a reputation not just of being skillful. But David had a reputation of being stalwart. Being stalwart. Notice what it says. Verse 18, Then answered one of the servants, said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, a Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing. By the way, it's interesting, he gave him a long list of stuff he was on his resume, on his reputation. They were just looking for a musician. But guess what? The rest of his character had an effect also. The rest of his reputation had an effect also. Well, I'm, I'm a great musician. Great. But you know, King, he, he's a great musician, but don't turn your back on him. King, he's a great musician, but he's, he's lazy. And it, no, our reputation, our testimony is so important. Anyway, back where we Stalwart, what he said. I have seen a son of Jesse, a Bethmite, that is cunning and playing, and a mighty valiant man. A mighty valiant man. The word mighty valiant there, the same as stalwart, means boldly courageous, brave, stout-hearted in mind and spirit. Stout-hearted in mind and spirit, boldly courageous. He's a mighty valiant man. It doesn't mean necessarily he's the strongest man, the biggest man. Saul was the biggest man, head and shoulders above everybody else. Remember when he anointed David, he said, don't look at the height. Nope. He said, I looked on the heart. And here he said, he was a mighty valiant man. We're talking about being bold, courageous, and stout-hearted. He was a man who was stalwart, somebody he could just depend upon, somebody who would not quit, somebody who could stick in the battle, somebody who could take a task and wouldn't easily stop. He was mightily valiant. By the way, we can develop that. Well, I don't feel valiant. You don't have to feel valiant. We just have to decide to be valiant, to act valiant, to just keep doing what we're supposed to do and not quit when the going gets hard. So he had a reputation of being stalwart. 2 Samuel 23 is another example of a man who is stalwart, who is valiant. One of David's mighty men. And he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and so he quit. That's not what the story goes. His hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. See, the Lord was able to wring a great victory because even though his hand was weary, his hand claved to the sword. It got stuck to the sword. His hand was on there so hard and so long and so weary. It was just so tired. He said, I'm going to hold on till finally he couldn't pry his fingers off. It was almost like it was glued to it. And God brought a great victory. Why? Because his man was stalwart. That man was valiant. That man was mightily valiant. He said, my hand is tired. My hand is weary. But I'm going to keep holding on to the sword. And God says, there's a man I can use. And because of that, God brought a great victory. That is valiant. That is stalwart. He did not quit. He just kept going. David was a man who had that kind of testimony. In Judges 8, 4, we talk about the men of Gideon. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him, faint yet pursuing. They were faint, but they just kept going. They were tired, but they just kept going. And God brought a great victory. Are you understanding tonight that his testimony was, here's a guy who won't quit. Here's a guy who's valiant. Here's a guy who's stout-hearted. Here's a guy who knows how to keep going, even when he's tired and when he's weary. What a great testimony. David's reputation, David's testimony was he was skillful. Yes, he was cutting, but also stalwart. He would not quit. Preacher, how in the world can I get a testimony of being stalwart? How can I get a testimony of being mighty valiant? Our testimony, our reputation is based upon what we do. Do valiant things. Don't quit. Don't stop. But it's hard. Yeah. But I'm weary. Yeah. Things are tough. Yeah. We're talking about letting God do that work in our life. Paul was an example. And all the tribulations and all the things that he did, he was a man who was stalwart, 
Apostle Paul was one who was mighty valiant. In Acts 14, 19, one we don't preach about too often, an amazing story. And it says, They came thither, certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persecuted the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So they threw rocks at him, they stoned him till they thought he was dead, they thought they'd done the job. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas and Derbe. So they, he, they stoned him and thought he was dead, and they drug him out of the city and left him. And the disciples stood around just watching him and said, well, this is a mess. But Paul came to, got up, and went back into the city where they just stoned him and drug him out. Stalwart, brave-hearted, stout-hearted, mighty, valiant man. We're known by what we do. It's interesting, David hadn't fought Goliath yet. David hadn't been, There was other things in his life that said, there's a man, I can tell by his reputation, I can tell by what he does, he doesn't quit. He doesn't quit. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one, so I quit. No. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered a shipwreck. Night and day I've been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which also come in my daily are the care of all the churches. I figure a fellow who can still keep going by the grace of God and that is one of mighty and valiant he's stalwart let's take God's example let's take that reputation of David he just had a reputation of being stalwart he said he's a mighty valiant man we do it by doing he was skillful he had a reputation a testimony of being stalwart David had a reputation of being a scrapper of being a scrapper I'm not saying he cut out little pictures and put them in a scrapbook that's not the kind of scrapper notice what it says about him I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, a mighty, valiant man, and a man of war. Now, as far as we know, he hadn't been to war yet. He didn't fight Goliath yet, he went, but he was a man of war. In other words, he was a fighter. He's a man who had the temperament able to fight, to stand for what's right, to fight the devil, to fight the wrong, to stand for what's right. He had that temperament. He was somebody who could knew how to bring on a fight. The word war there talks about an engagement and a battle, a willingness to engage. It doesn't mean he was looking for a fight. It doesn't mean he had a chip on his shoulder. But when it came time to fight, he said, here's the man for the job. Here's a man who knew how to conduct himself, knew how to handle himself, knew how to take care of things. He was a man who was a scrapper, who would be willing to go. Saul would need some people who were a scrapper. God needs some folks that are scrappers, willing to fight, not being angry, not being bitter, but willing to take a fight. First Thessalonians 6, 12, I think it's in your notes. Fight the good fight of faith. Well, I don't think a Christian ought to fight. Uh-huh. We ought not to be bitter. We ought not to be uh, antagonistic, but we, know how, we need to know how to fight the fight of faith. We need to be able to fight that. Lay hold on eternal life. First, First Timothy 1, 18. This charge... I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. We're talking about being a scrapper for what's right, standing for what's right, fighting the devil, fighting the enemy, standing in with folks that need to fight, just being able to be a scrapper. Again, not for the wrong, but for the right. Say, I'm going to fight for the Lord. I'm going to fight for the book. I'm going to fight for the faith once delivered. I'm going to fight for what's right. I'm going to fight against the devil. I'm going to fight against the flesh. Being a scrapper. Again, well, how do we get that? Reputation comes based upon what we do. We fight the good fight. Very quickly. David had a reputation for being sagacious. A reputation for being sagacious. The word sagacious means acutely discerning, perceptive. Sagacious, we get the word sage from it. Somebody's an old sage. So sagacious. So where do you get that? Notice what he says. He's a man and a man of war and prudent in manners. The word prudent there, being able to discern, being able to perceive, being acute mentally to discern right and wrong, being a sage, if you will. As a young man, he was able to be prudent in matters. 
He knew how to make the right call. He knew how to make the right decision. He could decide, he could figure out what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. As a young man, he could do that. Oh, we need some young folks. We need some middle-aged folks. We need some old folks who will be able to say, I know how to discern right and wrong. I know how to, to be a sage, if you will. I know how to discern and have perception and be accurate. I, need, I know how to, to, to discern these matters, and I can be prudent in matters. Even a child is known by his what? Doings. You see somebody and says, they haven't got a clue. They're not prudent in matters. Very quickly, preacher, how can I do it? How can I, how can I get that prudence in matters? How can I get that uh, sagaciousness? Very quickly, number one, it's gotten by practice. It's again gotten by practice. That goes back to decisions. To decisions, the decisions we make. Hebrews 5.13, we read it a few moments ago. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat... Belong to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. They've exercised their senses to discern good and evil. In other words, they spend their life practicing, is this good or is it evil? I'm going to choose the good. Is this good or evil? Is this right or wrong? Is this best or is this least? And making those decisions, it's by practice. We grow and become full age, if you will, spiritually, by practicing discerning good and evil, right and wrong. We can then become prudent in matters. This young man, David, he had that reputation based upon what he did, based upon his life, his reputation, his testimony, was he could discern right and wrong in matters. It's gotten by, number one, practice. Just start practicing it. In other words, when you see something, let the Holy Spirit tell you that's right or that's wrong. Don't let just the world feed you that stuff say that's wrong. Even if you're in the workplace, even if you're in the workplace and you have no choice but to listen to it, you have to understand that's wrong. I'm discerning. That's not right. That's not for me. That's not for the Christian. When the bosses and the company says this is the what direction we're going, we say that's not right. Or this is right. We have to discern. It's by practice. Number two, how do we get that kind of spirit, that kind of testimony? By prayer. By prayer. Solomon, when God asked him what he wanted. In 1 Kings 3, verse number 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And we know God was pleased with that re request, and he answered it. He says, Give me understanding that I can discern good and bad. Good and bad. Solomon didn't say, give me ears to hear the preacher. He said, let me discern what's good and bad. Let me know what's right and wrong. Let me know what's holy and unholy, what's clean and unclean. It's gotten by practice, by prayer, and by the Spirit and Scriptures. By the Spirit and Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2.13 Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. We're talking about being filled with the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit then teaches us the things that are spiritual, things from the Word of God. And so we become able to discern and understand spiritual things by the Holy Spirit and by the Scriptures. It's available for us. We all can become more wise, more discerning, more prudent in our matters, more prudent in the matters that we have. We can become that if we just decide I'm going to listen to the Spirit, I'm going to study the Scriptures, and let the Holy Spirit teach me and be honest with that, and then I'm going to pray and ask God to do that, and I'm going to practice these things. We can develop that sort of reputation, even as David did, because even a child is known by his doings. David had a reputation of a good semblance, of a good semblance. Well, he, he was a well-known guy. He had some good character. See, the problem is we just want to take one. But no, God looked at this whole thing. Verse 18. That is cunning in playing, a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in manners, and a comely person. Comely person. 
He was a good-looking young man. Semblance means outward appearance. But he says he's, he's, he's a good-looking young man. For the king to have in his palace, that was a good thing to have. But I began thinking about that. We're talking about reputation. We're talking about character. I think I've got the space in your notes, and I'm not trying to be trite, but I'm trying to help us understand. We, we can't all be good looking, but we all can be looking good. Are you listening to me? We all can't be good looking, but we can all be looking good. We can all be whatever God gives. God gives us looks. Let's give our looks to God. Hello, are you with me? God gives us the looks. We're stuck with what we've got. But let's take what God gave us for His glory and give it back to Him. The Bible tells us, we saw that just last week or so, when we looked at the anointing of David. Man looks on the outward appearance. That's what he said. He said, I know a man. He said, I, here's a reputation. He's got a testimony. He's a man of war. He's got all these things. But also he said, he's got a good appearance. He's somebody who could come and stand before the king. I don't think David was just good looking, but needed a bath. I don't think he was just good looking in his face, but also wore things that smelled too much like sheep all the time. There was an appearance about him. There was something to be recognized in that. We all can't have good, be good looking, but we all can be looking good. So, let's working on the outward appearance. We are known by our what class? Doing. Again, this is so simple, it, it, it scares me. So, men, if you don't want a reputation of being scraggly, get a haircut. Are we having fun tonight? Oh, I can't believe you called me scraggly. Well, if you don't want to be scraggly, get a haircut. Oh, I don't want to be called scruffy. I don't want to be a reputation of being scruffy. Shave. I don't want a reputation of being sissy or effeminate. Then don't dress and act that way. He's coming. He, he had good semblance. He said he looks good. He looks good. Ladies, if you don't want a reputation of being, uh, being the Bible word harlot, then don't dress like one. If you want a reputation of being masculine, then don't dress like one. Let's just learn to put on the... Let's do what God gives us and do the best with what we have. He had a reputation of being semblance. He said he's comely. Lastly, David had a reputation of being spiritual. He had a reputation of being spiritual. Notice what it says. And a comely person, and the Lord is with him. How did he get that testimony? Do you think on his chair he had a bumper sticker that says, Honk if you love Jesus like I do? I don't think so. Because he's known by, we're known by our what? Doing. He said, there's a man I can tell by his doing that God's with him. I've seen by observation. I've watched him live. I've seen him. Live. I can tell God is with him. So tonight, maybe God spoke to you about just some of those matters. Maybe just in general, the fact that, again, we're known by what we're doing. Even a child is known by their doing. Reputation and testimony opens opportunities. Testimony and reputation comes from what we do. What we do is based upon our character. Our character is determined by the decisions that we make. So if we want the right testimony, we want the right reputation, so that we come out like David did to have the opportunities that God might have for us. We don't know what God has for us. But as I've said so many times, our goal ought to be to live our lives in such a way that whatever God might have for us, we're as qualified as we can be. That's why who we marry, who we date, how we live, how we dress, always those attitudes always got to be, so I'm available the best I can to be whatever God wants me to be. That's based upon our testimony, which comes from what we do, which comes from our character, which comes from the decisions we make. Our character then. David's reputation. What an opportunity to go to the king. Why? Because somebody said, I've seen a son. I've seen a son. So tonight, let's make some decisions to start building our testimony, our character, by deciding right. Building the right character, doing right, and living right. Why? So we're available to God for what He wants. If David had not been a man of mighty valiance, 
if he hadn't been cunning in playing, if he hadn't been skillful in that, if he hadn't been a man of war, if he hadn't been prudent in his manners, if he hadn't been a, 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 a good-looking or at least a looking good person, God hadn't been with him. It, it, one of the servants might have said, you're right, you need, a, you need a good musician, king. Let's put an ad in the paper and see what we get. But wait a minute, he said, wait a minute, I know somebody. I've seen him. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, we thank you so much for your word and Lord.